Hi, welcome to a roundup of next week's soaps. I'm Patrick McLennan. The East End is wilder than a John Wayne Western when there's a fracar in R&R. &R. And when I say fracar, Kat, Stacy, Janine, Kim, Pat, Alfie and Billy all end up in the cells. Kat talks Stacy into having a girls' night out, and she reluctantly leaves Lily with Charlie. But once inside, they run into evil varmint, Janine. Words are exchanged, families are cussed, and nails are bared. It's not so much the Magnificent Seven as Calamity Janine. Then Billy, who's struggling to believe he's got a grown-up son, drowns his sorrows with Alfie. But after he makes a pass at Carol, Bianca leaps in and belts him. Billy takes a wild swing back, and when the handbags are lowered and the dust settles, the police have arrived and they're all taken to the station. Stacy takes the opportunity to let slip to Cat that Archie raped her. Then she panics that this implicates her as his murderer. Do you think? Ryan, meanwhile, winds up looking after Lily while Stacy's inside. And what's this? Do I detect a lad coming around to being a dad? Back in the cells, Billy opens up to Alfie about the friend who's learnt he has a son. Billy also has an awakening and resolves to get in contact with his son. Next, it's Corey. Say what you like about David Platt, and we do, but if he ever leaves Corey, he's got a great career in poker with that deadpan face. No, Your Honor, I truly don't remember running down my best mate. That's his defense, as Graham lies in intensive care and he faces the judge. Suddenly, though, he gets hope. Graham comes round and David thinks he's off the hook. Wrong. Graham wants vengeance for Tina. And so David prepares for court, so terrified you almost, almost feel sorry for him. But as he takes the dock, he has a blackout and collapses. Tina immediately claims he's pulling a fast one, but the doctor believes he's had an epileptic fit. Is that the real reason he ran down Graham? Okay, so Kylie's a single mum, but why should she have to stay in a knit? That's her logic for revealing to Becky she's off to eye a Napa with her boy. Becky, of course, is furious, while Steve is suspicious. And when Becky point-blank refuses to let her leave with Max, you know Kylie's cunning plan has worked. Despite Steve telling Becky some home truths about her sister, they're left holding the baby, while she swans off to bump and grind in the med. Finally, we stop in on Emmerdale. Ryan Lamb looks like he's about to be roasted in court. Things aren't good, with Natasha and Nathan lined up against him. His one real hope is Maisie. But is she safe from her brother? Ryan doesn't think so and urges her to move in with Faye. Which she does, specifically to get a rise out of her family. Natasha instead targets Faye, thinking she can persuade her to let Ryan rot in jail. Not only is she totally wrong, she underestimates Faye's fight. Ryan's day in court soon dawns, and Nathan immediately puts the defence on the back foot, while Sam and Doug's testimonies backfire. It's looking grim, until Nathan suddenly disappears. He's been kidnapped, and we find him bound and gagged and whimpering in a barn. Is this the stroke of fortune Ryan needs to get off? Layla's loving the opportunity to look after Jacob, but her maternal days may be numbered when she takes him to TJ's party. She lets him eat a cake with nuts in it, and he immediately goes into anaphylactic shock. He survives, but will Layla survive angry Alicia's wrath?